15th of September of 2022. Um, we invite you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Uh, Chairman George Nagel and Vice Chair Rich Weitzman are unavailable for this evening's meeting, so uh, I am sitting in uh, to chair this evening's proceedings. A couple administrative things before we get going. Um, with respect to two of the items on the agenda, the applicants in uh, cases of Appeal 3140 and 3142 have requested continuances of those cases until the October meeting so that if you are here to uh, hear or participate in the hearing with respect to appeal number 3140 or appeal 3142, that will be held in October uh, and will not be heard this evening. We move then to appeal number 3142. The applicant, Belrose Cap LLC, property located at 333 Belrose Lane and zoned CO Commercial Office and R2 Residential. The applicant seeks a special exception from Section 280-101A of the code to transfer an existing non-conforming restaurant use to another restaurant use. Is someone here from the applicant? Please. Please come forward. Hi, good evening. Uh, Norman? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm just a representative. I'm Thank you. Ross Esner. R O S S E S S N E R. And and Nancy. Mr. Astner, good evening. Um, what is uh, your relationship with the applicant, Belrose Cap LLC? I am an employee that currently operates a restaurant for them. Okay, uh, is that mic working? Hello? 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 Uh, no, uh, sorry, Kevin, this, that was the one that was up here. Technical difficulties, bear with us for a moment. We want the vast viewing audience at home to be able to hear you. Of course, of course, certainly. Okay, uh, so let's let's go with the podium uh, for now. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Esner, uh, you indicate that you're an employee of the applicant. I am. But you are, are you an equity owner of the applicant? Are you authorized to make decisions with respect to things that owners of the business would make a decision on with respect to this matter? I, I am. Okay. Um, okay. Um, do you have a... Uh, you don't happen to have a deed for the property with you, do you? I do not. Uh, because I, I noticed that the application was deficient in a number of respects with respect to documentation that we require to be in the application. Uh, one of them is a copy of a deed, an agreement of sale, or other auth authorization to file the appeal. Is Do you have something else in your possession that authorizes you uh, or the applicant to proceed in this matter currently? The le uh, are, who owns the property? The, the current owners. Okay. Who are they? Normally, normally, like yeah. uh, normally you're supposed to have a oh. power of attorney. I'm sorry. Okay, normally if you're not the owner, 
a lawyer representing the owner, you need to have a power of attorney. It's a document, legal document. It's commonplace. You don't have one of those. I, I, I do not. And the gentleman who's with you, who is he? This is Bill Kraft. Yep. Yep. Okay, we, we need to hear from either counsel or an equity owner in the business. So are either of you counsel or an equity owner in the business? No, I am the director of um, development. You're not sworn yet. I believe someone in the back is indicating that they may be a representative of the owner. Is that correct? Sorry? Yeah, you're going to need to come up and be sworn. If we don't have, if we don't have, if we can't establish authority to move forward on the appeal, we can either dismiss it or we can continue it. But right now, we're nowhere. How are you? It is. I see. James Creed, C-R-E-E-D. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Creed. Good evening. Our attorney is here also. That helps. That, that, that could help, too. I just want to make sure that we're clear on who owns what, who's authorized to appear, and who's able to make... Uh, actionable representations to this board in order for us to make a determination. Yeah, I, I'm here with my partner, 23 years, Rob Donaldson, and our attorney is Nicholas right behind us. Right here. Nicholas, T-S-O-U-R-O-S. Okay, uh, so you are the current owner. Yes. Is the property under agreement, or yes. uh, do we have a copy of that agreement of sale? I can get you one if you would like me to run back to my office and come back, I, you know, before the end of the meeting, the big, you know, your whole meeting, I can provide that to you, along with the deed. Uh, step, step up to the mic. Yes, yes, sir. I can um, run back to my office in King of Prussia, get what you're asking for, and bring it back um, before the end of your okay. overall let's, meeting. Okay, let's proceed on that basis okay. that after, after we have our conversation on this uh, application. Yes, sir. You'll do that and provide the agreement yes, sir. to us. And the deed as so well. That, so that we can, so that we can move. Have forward. the information. Understood. Okay. Okay. Uh, then on that basis, and uh, these gentlemen are authorized to proceed on the on on behalf of the equitable owners of the property. That's our understanding. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Through our communications over the several months, we've we're familiar with their names. Okay. Uh, okay, well, well, we'll look for the agreement of sale and the deed after uh, we conclude here. But, gentlemen, thank you for your uh, uh, accommodation for this. Would it be okay if I leave now and run and get it and then come back for you? Uh, it's, enti it's entirely up to you. Okay, I'll do that now. Okay, thank you. Excuse gentlemen, me. let's proceed. Um, thank you for your patience with of that. Of course. Yeah, sorry um, for the confusion. Uh, what uh, what can we do for you? So we are basically seeking um, the special exemption on the zoning that's in place currently, just to be passed along in the transfer of the uh, the ownership. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the current use of the property and your intended use of the property going forward. I'm assuming that your use of the property won't begin until after closing under the agreement of sale. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Why don't you uh, tell the board uh, what you intend, intend to do with the property? I mean, the idea is to just acquire the real estate and the business and operate it as is for a period. Um, there's no intention of making any physical changes to the building, uh, no geographical kind of, you know, there's not going to be a roof deck. The building as is, it, it works fine. Um, at some point, we'd like to make uh, some cosmetic changes, painting, you know, any interior sort of updates, that sort of thing. Anything that requires any uh, permits, we obviously apply for according to whatever the procedure may be for the township, and, and that's it. So currently, you would be, you, uh, shortly after closing, you would be 
conducting operations as it as they're currently conducted under 333 Belrose? That is correct. And then at some point in the future, you would change over to some other some other concept should you decide to do that? Yeah, I, I mean, the idea is to stay in the vein of what it is. You know, obviously with new ownership, there will be minor changes, some menu tweaks, that sort of thing, but nothing substantial at all. And in terms of the hours of operation for the facility, do you foresee any change in that? We do not. And in terms of the uh, times of day at which you uh, you would, does it serve lunch and dinner or just dinner or it, it's brunch like, on the weekend or what, what's your uh, lunch schedule? And, lunch and dinner. Uh, I know they do Saturday evening service. Um, they're closed Sunday and Monday currently. And in terms of uh, vendors bringing products to the to the facility, trucks, trash hauling, all of the those uh, operations will be conducted the same way they are now. Absolutely, we've already we've gone over the list of vendors they use. We we currently operate a restaurant, and they're all the same vendors that we're familiar with. So we see no point in changing anything. And in terms of uh, services, do you in, envision uh, having any sort of takeout uh, activities, or is it all uh, meals that are served and consumed on premises? Predominantly what I've seen and what I'm aware of, it's, it's on-premise dining. Um, obviously, if there were another COVID sort of situation and there's a, a pivot that's required, we would do that. But I mean, the business model works and that's what we're purchasing as, as part of our, our agreement. Um, so we plan on really following the model that's in place. Okay, and you, you may know this or, or not, but in terms of outreach to the neighbors, have, have you or anyone else from the applicant spoken with neighbors in the area with respect to the intended change of ownership and, and this application? We have not directly reached out, but I know we did a mailer that included neighbors um, that could come to this meeting if there were any questions or concerns. Uh, but I have not gone door to door and knocked or, or anything of that kind of, n nothing like that. So to sum up, you, you envision the operation of the restaurant following closing to be indistinguishable from the operation of the restaurant prior to closing. Absolutely. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Does the board have any questions? Will signage change? Uh, the, the intent in the beginning is to not change anything. If in fact we decide to have a new name at some point, um, we would have a new sign, but I know there are restrictions and limitations and we would obviously follow those. Uh, those rules to a T and, and you know, we're not trying to make any issues, we're really not. So uh, it was discussed and it was explained to us that there are certain rules and restrictions. We would follow those, of course. The, um, the set of plans, what you said, uh, two sets of plans here. One is uh, A1. Okay. See it? Are you yes. familiar with that plan? Yep. Any, any particular reason why you submitted this plan? Uh, I th we we had, there was, Given the time frame on when the plans were drawn, we were struggling to get um, actual physical copies. And there's a few hands that were involved in putting the packet together that you received. So I think it was just in an effort to supply as much information as possible to the board. Um, well, these plans are dated 1993 for our restaurant called Carolinas, which if memory serves me correctly, was the name of the restaurant after it was the greenhouse. Uh, that. I, I'm assuming I mean, that is the correct. The interior yeah. of the restaurant looked the way it looks on the, on A1. Yes. It's still the same. Yes. That's that's what we were provided with. And any changes that you're going to make to the interior, you intend to stay on the same footprint. The exact same footprint. Uh, on the application, there appears the name of the applicant is Belrose Tap LLC. That is correct. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, nobody signed it. Well, somebody signed it. I can't make the signature out. But the uh, the, the uh, email for the person who apparently filled this out is M Burns at Capano Inc. Yeah, Capano Inc. Yeah. What is that? 
Capano Inc. is the company that will actually own the property. That's, it's a development company based in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, M. Burns is Morgan Burns, who is the assistant to the, the principal. So is Mr. Creed buying the property or? M Mr. Capano Creed owns it. Capano is buying the property. The Creed, Mr. Creed is the current owner, current partner in ownership. The same Creed that owns the one up and. I, I believe so. I, I, yeah, I, I believe so. I don't know. All right. Thanks. Of course. I have no other questions. Thanks. Thank you. Is it clear that the applicant who is represented here tonight? We, we, are, we are clear that this, uh, uh, Mr. Esner is a representative of the applicant. Of, of it's really of on, the, on the basis of, 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 that is correct. It's really on the basis of Mr. Creed's indication earlier on the record and also we will be uh, receiving some additional information from council when he returns. And uh, I, I think what we're going to do in the interest of time is to hold in abeyance the actual determination on this case until we get those other documents back. Okay. But obviously I don't want to hold everyone up and there's a case behind you guys. So we're going to um, finish up our examination here and hear from any members of the public who might have comment and then sort of suspend operations with respect to this application, move on to the other case because these folks are are waiting too. So. Sure, understood, thank you. Thank uh, you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to be heard on this matter? Uh, seeing none, I will uh, on my own motion move the application and related materials into the record. We will, um, we will not close the record because we will wait for counsel for the current owner to come back so that we can add some additional documents to the record. But for right now, uh, we will, uh, we will uh, adjourn the hearing on Appeal 3143, and we will proceed to Appeal 3144. Uh, the applicant, and if I mess these names up, I apologize in advance. Uh, appeal 3144, the applicant, Maine Techniques Hair Company, property located at 322 East Lancaster Avenue and zoned CO commercial. The applicant requests relief from section 280-42A to use the property as a hair and color studio. Is anyone here for the applicant in this case? Come on up. Gentlemen, you're gonna have to give up that, that fine real estate there, thank you. Good evening. Yeah, I, I didn't hear your name. Could you say oh, it again? Patrick Blair. Mr. Blair, what do you have for us this evening? All right, well, I do have some, a couple additional exhibits that were um, that we've got since we submitted the application. I can address those later, but uh, I can just give a brief overview and then we can proceed any questions you have. And I would also like to present um, the testimony of, of Mary Tomasetti, who is one of the equitable owners of the property. Uh, quick question. Uh, w when I got here today, I was greeted with two copies of this plan. Is that one of the, is that one of the additional exhibits? That it is. It is. Yeah, that was for the, I have extra copies. John, here's another, another copy for the file. Okay. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I provided those to the board. Those were emailed to us. Um, okay. I had indicated via email that I would provide those. The two copies for you was one for the file. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, please proceed. All right. So, um, this one works, right? So uh, essentially what we're looking for here is we have, um, we're trying to, uh, my client, Mary Tomasetti and Main Techniques, they're looking to open a hair studio in 322 East Lancaster Avenue. Um, initially, we think this is consistent with the requirements of uh, 280-42, right? It says uh, section A there, office or studio not involving characteristics normally associated with retail activities um, on the premises. 
and we did some digging, and I don't know if this was included in the initial application or not, but there was a similar uh, application to this board for a hair studio in a CO that was approved, um, and I have both the application for that and the decision by this board allowing a hair studio to exist in a CO district. That, that would be helpful if you could uh, uh, bring that up. And actually, before I bring these up, I wanted to just add an additional point. It's we have, we actually identified two different studios in the CO district that are providing similar services to our client. One of them we can't, there was no record of them applying for any sort of relief. Um, I'm not trying to get anyone in trouble, but they do exist. Um, so I have both the two properties that currently exist. Um, and I have a list of those, and then I have the decision for the second property that actually applied from relief uh, to run the hair studio in the CO district. So uh, initially, our argument is that we are completely within the language of the, the CO designation, um, and as demonstrated by the, the fact that similar entities already exist in this manner in, in, the, in the district. Um, if, that, if that doesn't, if, if, if more is needed, uh, we also, and we understand the issue might be that there is some de minimis uh, retail associated with hair studios, right? Um, not, this is a professional uh, operation, you know, a professional services operation that doesn't deal with retail, right? These are, this is not a retail operation. Anybody that comes in would have to come in by appointment. Um, and then if they buy, you know, a, a shampoo or something on the way out, they can do so. This is not something where members of the public are walking in to purchase products um, or, you know, something that, a traditional retail operation. Um, so, if the issue ends up being this de minimis retail, uh, we've also done some investigation into this actual property where this, this uh, business would be located. And at one point it was used as a post office which had some de minimis retail associated with it. So there has been some retail on this property already. Moreover, the character of the neighborhood is essentially retail. And you'll hear testimony about this later, but all the buildings across the street are retail. It's across from a strip mall that's all retail and then directly next to it is the CVS that is uh, also obviously retail. Um, there's, I have a zoning map here that I'm gonna provide. I do have more. Well, Is 
This is a map that we got off Radner's uh, website. It zones in on the property you're located in. The reason why I'm, I'm going to be introducing this today is because it clarifies the issue with uh, the CVS, uh, which we think is important if, it, if the retail becomes more of an issue for the board. And the, and the reason why I want to point this out is that 318 is actually owned by the CVS. It's still in the CO district. Our property is 322, so the property next to it is 318. And that entire property is a parking lot for CVS. So it's a parking lot in the CO district uh, associated with retail activities. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, can we get these exhibits up yeah, on the display board, please? Yeah, I'm, 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 going, I'm marking them here even as I speak. So for housekeeping purposes, we're going to mark the applicant, the uh, application as Exhibit A1, the copy of the prior uh, decision of this board in Appeal Number 2814 as Exhibit A2, the list of uh, beauty and um, uh, cosmetology salons as Exhibit A3, the copy of the zoning map which Council was just referring to as Exhibit A4, and we'll take it from there. I think we're caught up now. Until now. Yeah, I'm sorry to swamp you guys with exhibits, but the last one I'll just I'll just put in for the record. Oh, sorry. So I actually have a lease between the. So, so just to clarify, the property here was uh, used by Brimar Trust, and then it got uh, taken over by WSFS. This is a copy of the lease that uh, Brimar Trust had with the post office for this property, which establishes the the de minimis retail activities that were existing there. That'd be great. And Norma, I would note for the record that Exhibit A to Exhibit A one is a copy of an agreement of sale for this property. And council has just passed up exhibit A5, which is the prior lease with the US Postal Service. All right, so um, I don't wanna take up everybody's too much time. I can get some pictures, I can address those when uh, Mary has a chance to, to speak to, to the board. But yeah, that would be great. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we get into the specifics? I'm sure we'll have questions, but uh, please proceed. Okay. Now, how, now with Mary, do we have, I guess Mary would use this mic here. This one works. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, she'll be sworn. Norma? Mary Tomasetti, M A R Y. T-O-M-A-S-S-E-T-T-I. Hello. Yes, the viewers at home want to. <laughs> All right, Mary, while I'm getting, get, pulling up the testimony here, can you uh, state your current business address uh, for the board? We are located at 220 Sugartown Road in Wayne. And can you provide the board with a little bit of information about your business, what you do, how long you've been in business? Yes. So we opened Main Techniques at the end of November in 2019 in the Devon Square Shopping Center. We operate as a high-end hair salon providing luxury services from hair color, all traditional hair salon services in addition to hair extensions and hair replacement systems. Okay, and you said it was 2019 that started? Yes. And what did you do before you started Main Techniques? I worked as a service provider at a different salon in the area. And are you the only owner of Main Techniques? I am not. I am 50, 50 with my partner, Kara Katagnas. Kara Katagnas, C-A-R-A-C-A-T-A-G-N-U-S. And I think you were indicating that Kara is with us today yes, as well. Yes, Kara is right here in the black. Okay. Now, uh, the property that we're here for tonight is the one located at 322 East Lan Lan Lancaster Avenue. And are you the equitable owner of that property? Yes. Right. And there was an agreement of sale that was attached to our initial application. I'll just pull it up here. Um, I'm just going to ask you to identify it for the board to make sure it's accurate. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Can you take a look at that agreement?
This looks about right without me reading every page. <laughs> no, but is, is that the agreement of sale you signed yes. for the property? Yes. And is that the signature on the document? Yes. All right, so that's a true and correct uh, copy of that agreement of sale. Yes. All right, that's what we were looking for. Um, now, in terms of 322 East Lancaster Avenue, can you tell the board a little bit about what you plan to do there? So we plan, we plan on making the current building that's there, we plan on leaving all the structural whereabouts of the building and mostly cosmetic imperfections and operational uses that will be needed to be made to the inside of the building. Um, we plan on obviously getting all the proper permits as far as plumbing, electrical goes, uh, that is necessary for the township and also the Board of Cosmetology. All right, and the services that you're gonna be providing at 322, are they similar to the services you currently provide at your hair salon, are they different in any way? Yes, they are exactly the same. All right, and what would your hours of operation be? Our hours of operation uh, will be flexible at different times of the year, but typically it's going to be Monday through Friday around 8 a.m. until about 7 p.m., and Saturday or Sunday uh, around 10 to 4, most likely. And how many days, a w so you're, you would be open Sunday as well? Most yeah. likely not a Sunday. Um, Sundays are often used for days for education for our team if necessary. Typically Monday through Saturday would be the days we would be operating. How many employees do you expect to have? Uh, we expect to have probably in operating inside of the building about eight, 16 at the very most. Um, total, not at one time. Mm -hmm. At one time we would have between six and eight employees operating. Okay. And in terms of clients, how many clients would you expect on a daily basis? Uh, maximum, at one time in the salon, a maximum of 16. And on a daily basis, it will definitely vary from day to day. Um, we do provide luxury services that typically take a little bit longer than a traditional hair salon, so the in and out traffic is a little bit less than you would see at a typical salon. Um, but depending on per stylist, about three to five clients a day per service provider working that day. All right, and would these clients be appointments, walk-ins? By appointment only. Okay, and how do the clients make appointments? Is that something they do online or they call into the office? They're able to book online. Also, they can text our salon phone or call us or make them in the salon. Uh, we typically book, rebook most of our clients inside of the salon due to the little flexibility in our schedules. <laughs> the little bit of flexibility in our schedules. All right, and then in terms of parking, what, is there any parking available at the building that you're? That yes, you're the currently there are 21 spaces. Uh, at this time, we intend on keeping all 21 spaces exactly where they are. And would that 21 spaces satisfy both the needs of your clients and uh, your employees? Yes. All right. Would it need any additional parking beyond the 21 that currently currently exists on the property? Not that we know of at this time. I do not see that being an issue. All right. Now, uh, would there be any retail at this location if your application was approved? There will be retail available to purchase. Our retail goes along with whatever their services are. So it's not somewhere you're coming in to shop for retail. It's something that you come in, we prescribe you something that has to do with the services that you are receiving, and then we will send you home with it if necessary. All right, and how much, and the would that be similar to the retail operation you currently have at, at the current location of Main Techniques? Yes, it will be exactly the same. And currently, how much of your business is would you estimate is related to retail? Uh, revenue would be less than 10%. All right. Similar per percentage expected at this location? Yes, if not less, honestly. All right. And the retail services, are they limited to clients with appointments, or is anyone can just walk in and, and attempt to purchase a, either a, a, you know, a hair product? Uh, we do not market outside of our clients for retail. It's focused on being prescribed to them for whatever services they're receiving at the salon, so. All right, now I wanna talk a little bit about the history of the building. I know you were here when I was speaking with the board earlier, but the property that you're buying, has there ever been any uh, retail at that property as far as you know? Yes. And can you tell the board what that is? The, in the most recent future, it was, or in the most recent past, it was the post office, which had typical retail that a post office would have. And the ratio of that would definitely be more retail to service and tenants than we have. We plan on having probably 
maybe 10 square feet designated to retail out of the 4,000 square foot building. It's not a focus of ours. Yeah. Now, uh, the property, 322 East Lancaster Avenue, is currently zoned as a commercial office district. Uh, prior to coming today, did you have a chance to review any other hair studios or hair salons in the area that exist in a commercial office district? Yes, we know of two. And did you do any, uh, did you either go to those stores or look up what kind of services they provide? Yes, I have been there in the past. And oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, yes, I have been to, I have been in one of them, and I'm well aware of the other. We do provide similar services. And yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, Is that the rest of the question? Yeah. Okay. So, yep. the, so very just similar just services. Similar services. Um, now, turning to the character of the neighborhood, how would you ca describe the character of the, the area immediately around this location that you're looking to purchase? Immediately around this location, it is surrounded by pretty much all retail. Um, and we did reach out to the local businesses that neighbor the property of 322. And I do have uh, written and verbal consent from the owners of these buildings that would be more than happy to allow us to, or not allow us, would be more than happy to have us as neighbors. Um, I did write them an introductory letter explaining exactly who we are um, and also just to network in the area and make sure they know what's coming so it's not as much of a surprise. Excuse me. You, you, sorry. At the rear of the property, there are, com uh, there are residential neighbors, is that right? I am not sure, to be honest. I believe behind the property is residential but just along Lancaster Avenue, that all is commercial. Yeah, no, 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 I, I, I understand that, but to the, extent, to the extent that the CO abuts a residential district, you've got residential neighbors who may also have a view as to how excited they would be to have that property as a functioning business. So you re didn't reach out to any of the residential neighbors behind you? No, I well, have we, not reached we, out to them. We sent out the mailings of this application. Oh, no, 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 I'm, okay. I'm aware that the notice of, of the hearing, yeah. I'm sure, went out. I, I'm just saying, in much the same way of reaching out to the other businesses, did you also reach out to your residential neighbors? That's all, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I can, I'm definitely also happy to personally do that if that was something that wouldn't be a bother to the residential neighbors. And, and did you bring a copy of the, the signed letter from the, the immediate, uh, commercial neighbors uh, that you spoke with? I did not. I ran into an issue today. I apologize. But that's something that can be provided? Yes. I also have it um, virtually. And I in the meantime, you would, would you have any problem also doing the same sort of introduction to the residential properties behind the building um, and, and s seeing if there's any objection to your operation? Not at all. I will send them the exact same letter. All right. Now I want to I show a couple of pictures that were um, well, before I show the pictures, can you tell the board exactly which businesses you went to and spoke to about, about your intent with this property? Yes. I spoke with the, so the businesses that gave full consent said they would be, you know, excited for us to be there. What is the Jaguar Land, uh, Range Rover dealership, the owner there who's been the owner there for 24 years. Was that a picture of the dealership you went to? Yes. Okay. Uh, Norma, for the record, uh, these photo uh, these are the Exhibit B photographs that are part of the application. Similar. That exhibit um, I did print some out in color. Uh, I did get a closer shot of the strip mall, but they're essentially similar. I can provide these as well, though. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you would, if you would do that. Yeah. Let's uh, let's identify these pictures as. No, th these are apparently different pictures than. Slightly pictures different that. angles, but essentially the same picture. So these pictures are going to be exhibit A6, and then there'll be one, two, three, however many. Three pictures. All right. So here's the, uh, this was the dealership that you spoke to? Yes. Okay. And this is the Jaguar Land Rover image. There you go. Yes. The owner there is who I spoke with. Okay. And then you. The owner of this uh, dealership is who I spoke with. Jaguar Land Rover dealership. And then who else did you speak with? I also spoke with the owner of Nick Filet, wh who is in that strip mall, along with the owner of Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. And uh, I did speak with the CVS and Five Below. I was only able to get to a manager level with them. They verbally said that, but they are not able to sign anything off on behalf of the owners to say that. 
Understood. They would be happy to have us. And this is in the application, so it will need to be separately marked, but just so that the board can see it. Is that the TVS you spoke with? Yes. Okay. And then in terms of the strip mall, uh, this this would be part of the new packet. Is that a picture of the strip mall that you went in and spoke with the tenants there? Yes. The okay. And this picture right here, this, will, this is the same strip mall, correct? Yes. And this is a listing of all the retail operations in that strip mall? Correct. And is your the building that you're looking to purchase uh, visible in this picture? Yes. All right. And can you show the board where that is? So here is the building, and then here is the center, the strip mall that we're surrounded, or that's across the street. And then the dealership is right across the street from where we are, where we will hopefully be. All right. And the last question I have is in relation to the, the CVS that's located next to the property. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the CVS operation that's uh, adjacent to this building you're looking to purchase? It is a... Well, in terms of the parking, just so that we understand. is Let me put it this way. Next to your building, is there a parking lot? Yes. Okay. And what is that parking lot to? The retail store, CVS. All right. All right. And it, would that be 318? Yes. Okay. I think that's all the questions I have about uh, what I want to go in terms of the character of the neighborhood and the plan for the building. Does the board have any questions? Oh, I, that was the last question I had in terms of the character and neighborhood and even what and main techniques plan for the building. And I was asking if the board had any additional questions. Yep. Any questions from the board? You don't anticipate uh, adding additional services? At this time, no, not at all. We are currently operating out of a space that has been too small for us for over two years now, um, and we plan on spreading out. Uh, we currently have five stylists that work for us, and we are planning on possibly hiring one more stylist to continue the exact same services that we provide now. Hair is and has always been our focus. We are not looking to become a major center for everything cosmetology. It's completely hair focused. So no, at this time we have no plans for any future. So no estheticians or massage not. therapists or anything like that? No, definitely not. That's all I have, thank you. Okay, yeah. Uh, one question about your current operations, uh, and I apologize for not being familiar with it. Um, it's on Sugartown. Is it on the La Maison side of Sugartown, or is it on the strip mall side of Sugartown, I guess, in that area, in, in that in that shopping center where the Acme is? It is in the shopping center where the Acme is. Are you familiar with Dan Dan Restaurant? Yes. We so are, are, right are you left. Are you in Radnor Township currently, or because the township okay. line kind of cuts right through there. Dan Dan is in Radnor. The, the other stores further up Sugartown are not. We're so, Rad, I believe we're Radnor Township, but um, okay. Delaware County, Radnor Township. Okay, yeah, just just curious, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Just curious. We are like f on Sugartown Road, okay. facing that, not Lancaster Ave now. Right. Uh, I noticed that uh, on this list, which was marked, I forget, it's the list of other hair salons in uh, the area. Yes. It's a, a3, Norma. Is that uh, A3? And... <coughs> It appears that at uh, 220 Sugartown Road, which is your address, yes, there's there's two other studios: Megan Christina Hair Studio and Uplift House Hair Studio at the same address. Correct. Are you associated with those in any sh way, shape, or form? We are not. So where we are currently is almost set up. If you're familiar with the WeWork situation, where it is one building and it has different suites, almost like different doctor's offices. If you go into a medical building with separate doctor's offices, they're all separate salons. Right. Each room is a separate entity. Uh, actually, with the exception of us, we take up uh, two small rooms there. Um, everyone else is their own entity separately, so we are in no way connected to any of them. Correct. If I understand that uh, operation, mm -hmm. uh, you rent space from a developer who put that package together, and there's you and many other hair salons. Uh, that is correct. We in there. Correct. We technically have a licensing. It's not considered a lease. It's considered a license correct. with them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank
Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, let me let me do the faux uh, photos, and then I can move the floor plan. Okay. Take a seat. Glad I'm glad I brought enough copies. I was worried that I there was too much paperwork. There's never too much paperwork. <laughs> The, the plan the council just uh, passed up will be exhibit A7. Um, so the, the, just one last point and then I'll, I'll uh, uh, wrap it up. But I just wanna, just in terms of the actual language um, for a commercial office di district, uh, we looked everywhere. There's no definition of a studio, all right? Um, and, and there's nothing that would limit a studio, um, nothing that would prevent a studio in these circumstances, right? And not only that, there exists already hair studios in CO districts. And I just wanna highlight that point. There isn't uh, a definition of studio that would take our client outside the language of, of a CO district. Um, so I, I believe that almost as of right, our client would be able to open this operation there. Um, and then if it does come to the retail, does become an issue, I believe that there's enough uh, history with both this location and the area to, to establish the fact that re so de minimis retail would not make or break this situation. So, council, assuming arguendo that we differ with you on whether studio uh, is is encompassed by the activities that have been described for the future use of the property, do you have a, a an argument for us on? Uh, the availability of, of variance and more particularly of hardship? Well, so so if you were to differ, um, which, I, you know, I again, I have to stress the fact that this has happened before. There has been approved use of a, of a hair studio in the CO district. But if, if that isn't sufficient, um, the the hardship here is that the, the retail is almost entirely it's, it's not even a focus of these professional services, right? The, the focus here is professional hair services. And some of those services require a, a shampoo or conditioner or other hair product to go along with it. Th those can be uh, you know, purchased online or at a store. It's out of convenience that it's offered to the customers. But this is not, uh, the hardship here would to, to, to prevent this application from happening for a retail that is not the focus nor the main drive of this business would be, would be the hardship our, uh, that we would you know seek in terms of the variance. Any other questions for council from uh, from the board? All right. Thank, thank you. you for uh, your time. Thank you. Uh, are there any members of the public that would like to speak to this application? Seeing none. And Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I was looking over here. Please come forward. Thanks. Uh, yes, you're going to need to come up to the m microphone and be sworn by Norma. Ball, if you could speak into the mic, that would be great. Thanks. Certainly. Hi, Your Honor.
excuse me, I apologize. I'm here representing WISFUS. We are both the seller and we have no objections to the intended use of this property. We support it. Great, thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, uh, seeing none, um, I'll entertain a, a motion to uh, get uh, our deliberation started. Uh, it seems to me that... Uh, Need a motion first, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you'll deliberate, John. <laughs> we need a motion. <laughs> All right, so, so I'll, I'll say, I'll, okay, go ahead. Okay, I was going to make a motion that the board finds that this proposed use is um, approved as a, 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 a use that, uh, that is uh, a matter of right under the zoning hearing code. Is there a second? Any board deliberation? John, now's your chance. And I'm not really totally familiar with this, so if somebody is more familiar, please jump in. But it seems like uh, if, if you buy something at uh, a barbershop or a hair salon, it's just secondary to why you're in that place in the first place. That's to get your hair cut. So if you want to take home a product that they, that they, that they use on you while you're there, uh, okay, you buy a bottle of that stuff, whatever it is, uh, maybe one or two customers show up occasionally because they just love the stuff so much, you gotta, you know, use it so much, but they wanna buy a little bit more of it or give it to their friends, whatever, but it's, it really is, it's very, very, very much the tail of the dog. So I don't really see it as a, as a significant factor in the lease. In other words, the existence of the slide is to cut people's hair, it's not to sell them the, the, the hair product. In, 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 in this, it, as a separate thing, as a separate item. If that makes any sense. It does. Any, anyone else? Okay. Seeing Mr. Mr. Chairman, just one point of order for, yeah. just, or clarification rather. The retail component of that is not what brought this in front of the board. The use itself, the salon slash studio, is considered a personal service in Radnor Township. <coughs> personal service uses are not permitted in the CO district. The retail is accessory. We were not taking exception to the retail component of the personal service use. It's the personal service use that is coming in front of this board to operate in the CO district, not the accessory retail component, which is why that other studio in the CO district was in front of this board for a variance. The second one operated uh, without permits or approvals and we're currently working to enforce uh, and bring that property into compliance. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, with, with that observation, I'd invite counsel to respond, if he has a response, to the characterization of the services that will be performed at this location as personal services under the Radnor Code, as opposed, I mean, there was a lot of focus on the retail, not so much on the other services. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the personal service? Right, and, and that was, um, thank you for the question. Um, thank you for pointing that out. That was the issue why I presented that prior application and the prior decision by this board to show that it has already been established that this sort of professional services is, while it, there is a designation for professional services in the code, it's also been established that in the CO district, these pr pr uh, professional services are allowed, and in fact, the board has allowed it, right? This is, there, there is a, there's a basis for our application in, in the presence of this board itself. Yeah, and, and it, it may be useful to note that we have consistently taken the position over time that prior decisions of the board have no precedential effect in future cases. So can you tell us a little bit more about the facts of, that gave rise to the, the board making the determination that it made in the earlier case? Well, that <laughs> I, I wish I could. It, it was essentially a one-line decision. I, I, uh, it, they didn't elaborate on uh, the basis for why they approved it, but I can tell from the application itself, it was very similar to the application that we presented to the board today. Right? They, um, this was a hair salon that uh, 
sought, uh, well, actually, I think what happened in that case was they started operating the hair salon, hair studio, not realizing that uh, it was no longer consistent. I believe that property had uh, maybe prior to the rezoning, it had been designated differently. Um, at that time, they were unaware that, that they couldn't operate a hair studio in a CO district, or that it could be an issue to operate a hair studio in a CO district. Uh, had open operations, and then, um, uh, you know, they, once they realized an issue, they, they, they came, they presented this application to the board, um, essentially seeking the same relief we're seeking, same facts. Um, my client, uh, Mary Tomasetti, has testified that she went in to this hair studio and looked at their services online, and they're exactly, uh, or is close to exactly similar to the services that this company, CAPI, provides currently, right? So it's, uh, um, while not being able to, to elaborate on the reasoning of the board, I can t tell you that uh, the facts are nearly indistinguishable and the professional services that my client would be providing um, are exactly similar to the professional services are, that have, are currently being provided by a hair studio in a CO district. Thank you. Yep. Well, in light of what oh, Kevin oh. just said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's, uh, yeah, I was going to, uh, it's your motion, obviously. If you want to withdraw it or, or revise it, we can do that. But the, uh, I, would, I would be very reluctant to approve this by right. I'm going to withdraw the motion. Okay, is there another motion uh, that anyone would like to make with respect to the application? Uh, yeah, all right. I'm I a lawyer. Would, uh, Thank you. Uh, let me, let me I, I would I would move that the uh, uh, that the application uh, of the applicant be approved and and the variance uh, relief granted with respect to I'm going to find it now section 280-42 of the code to permit the use in accordance with the uh, testimony that's been presented this evening. Is there a second? Second. Any further board discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. Mr. John Nagel? Aye. Ms. Foreman? Aye. Mr. Lord? Aye. I'm also aye, so Norman, the vote is four to zero. Uh, good luck with uh, the project. Thank you for uh, uh, putting up with some of the legal stuff. And uh, council, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you for your time thank tonight. You. Okay, returning back now, uh, we will resume the hearing in Appeal 3143. Again, the applicant, Belrose Cap LLC, Bel uh, property located 333 Belrose Lane. Uh, do we have any materials from council to the form or the current owner? Excuse me. And if you could identify yourself again for uh, the, the re court reporter. Uh, Nicholas Tesouris for. Nicholas, T-S-O-U-R-O-S, -O -O attorney for the sellers of the Bell Rose. And I have the agreements of sale and the deed. Thank I you. Approve. Oh, there's a microphone here. I have the agreements of sale as well as a deed. Would you like me to hand them up to you? Yes, or? please. That would be appreciated. And I also appreciate your adherence with all traffic laws uh, running back <laughs> and forth between your office and the site of this hearing. Okay. Okay. Sorry. And, okay, I, for, I forget where I was marking exhibits in that case. Anybody uh, I don't know refresh, that anywhere. refresh my recollection? I don't think you marked Mr. any. Mr. Solicitor? I don't think you marked any. Oh, we didn't mark any. Okay. So for uh, going back now to appeal 3142, Norma will mark uh, the application as uh, A1, the 1993 plan of the property as uh, Exhibit A2, and I would note for the record that was there was a prior reference in the record to A1 because the plan itself was marked A1, but we're going to mark it A2. So that prior reference to the plan should be understood as A2. Then there is a, um, a plan uh, dated July 15, 2020 by Ash Associates. This is a, a, an Alta land title survey. That will be A3. And Mr. Tesouris has just provided us a deed to the property, which will be exhibit A4. 
I'll, I'll give you these terms. Yeah. Um, an agreement for the sale of real estate, which will be uh, marked as A5. And I guess FF and E is part of the deal. That's the asset purchase. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, uh, exhibit A6 is an asset purchase agreement also by the, uh, the parties. So, Uh, Mr. Tsaros, thank you. Uh, w one other question I have I have for you because uh, while you were uh, while you were out, uh, a question uh, came from one member of the board with respect to our confidence that uh, Mr. Esner and his colleague are appropriate representatives of the the uh, equitable owner of the property. Uh, you indicated, I believe, earlier uh, when you were here that you are familiar with their names from correspondence uh, in, in conjunction with the transaction that we're talking about. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you consider them to be uh, uh, authorized per, uh, authorized parties on on, res, or on behalf of the purchaser to be uh, before us this evening? Yes. It's my understanding they're agents of the purchaser. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank Through you all very much. our, you know, communications and whatnot. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one, one last call for public comment with respect to this application. If there uh, isn't any, I will now close the record. Much to the solicitor's pleasure. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'll ask for uh, a motion uh, for uh, the, uh, uh, the application in Appeal 3143. I'll move that uh, the applicant uh, be granted the relief uh, from Section 280 dash. Sorry. Well, this is a special exception uh, under 281.01a. Uh, uh, seeks uh, uh, grant the special exception uh, from section 280-101.a uh, to allow for the uh, transfer of an existing non-conform conforming restaurant use to another restaurant use. Is there a second? Any board? Any board discussion? Um, th thanks everyone for scrambling on this stuff. Uh, I, in a perfect world, the application would have been a little bit more buttoned down than it was, but I uh, appreciate everybody's flexibility in uh, getting, getting things in front of us. Uh, you know, on the basis of the testimony that uh, has been presented, I, I will be uh, voting in favor of, of, the, uh, of the motion. Any other board comment? Okay, hearing no other board comment, I'm going to call, call the vote. Mr. John Nagel? Aye. Ms. Foreman? Aye. Mr. Lord? Aye. And I also vote aye. That's four to zero, Norma. Uh, good luck with the project. Gentlemen, thank you uh, for, your, uh, for your participation this evening. And with that, uh, there's no other business before the board. We're going to adjourn this meeting and see you in October. It's the second quarter of the game. <laughs>